Folks, this stock market is pure insanity right now. There's so much going on. There's so much I want to show you guys in this video here today, break out to you and, and show you exactly what's going on. And some of this stuff uh, honestly makes a lot of sense. And other of this stuff is just frying people's brains. They're like, why is this happening? Why is this certain thing moving this way, but this other thing is moving this way? And so a lot of folks are trying to make, make sense of this. And in this sort of market, it's hard to make sense of a lot of what's going on, okay? We're going to get right off the bat. We're going to talk about volatility here. We're going to show you, uh, basically, I'm going to take you through kind of time periods of volatility in the market and what that means and then we got a whole bunch of other stuff to get into hope you guys enjoy this as always make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button it's absolutely free to do so also just so you know we only got a few hours left for the v-day sale for financial fortress in my private stock group to access all the course curriculums that goes into everything i look for in stocks running portfolios things like that also you get part of the the, the discord chat with the six and seven figure members all those sorts of things so yeah if you want to take advantage of that deal right before it ends check out pin comment down there it is ending in a few hours, okay? So, getting off the start, huh? let's talk about volatility index, the VIX. The simplest way to think about the VIX is if there's a lot of fear in the market, and people are scared, and, and, and invest, when I say people, I mean investors. If investors are scared, the VIX is going to go high, essentially. That's what always happens. When, when folks get scared about whatever's going on out there, the, the VIX goes high. And right now, obviously, there's, there's so much to be fearful of in this market right now. You got the Russia situation. You got the Fed. You got inflation. You got what you know. Talk about wages are going to go insane. You got real estate trading high. You have so much right now that is put out to you, you know, out there. And it seems like everything seems like everywhere you go on mainstream media right now, it is it is it is drama, and almost everything is seen from a negative angle right now. You know, I, I just I had CNBC on for like the last hour or two, right? And I couldn't find them spinning anything positively. I mean, literally every single thing was spun from a negative standpoint, a negative angle. I couldn't find one thing. Not one thing was like, oh, wow, that's a bright something. Everything, everything is coming from a negative angle right now. And obviously the Russia situation is dominating this market. So when you have that going on, the VIX is going to be very, very high in that scenario. And that's exactly what we're seeing here today. The VIX obviously is up huge. I've seen it up more than 15% at some points here today. I think it hit around 32, right? When we pull up a one-year chart, we're looking at a VIX that's uh, you know around the highest we've seen at any point in the, in the past year. And keep in mind, volatility has been pretty darn high lately. This is really eye-opening here, okay? What we're looking at now is a five-year chart for VIX, the volatility index. And what you're going to find is most of the time, most of the time, the VIX is going to be trading anywhere between maybe 10 on the low end and 20 on a, a, like an upper end. When you start getting to 30 plus, you're going to just understand you're in a very, very fearful market. And what we're going to see by looking at something like this is because the, we had such a massive shaking of the market when, when Roni Rona came around, the VIX has been trading much higher than it usually trades. Because go ahead and look at 2017, basically up until Rona, and you're, you're going to find the market was actually pretty darn stable, right? Yeah, we had a few time periods where VIX really spiked up. But when the market is, the market loves stability, okay? The market loves stability. The market loves any scenario where earnings are, are pretty steady, where wages are pretty steady, where unemployment's pretty steady. The market hates ultra volatility when things are moving around like insanity, right? Now, a lot of people ask me like how I'm able to uh, hold so strong during these sorts of markets, right? One right now, like the Russia situation and what's going to happen there, inflation, you know, all this drama right now, right? Where it's just everything's bad news. Everything's coming from a negative angle. How am I able to hold strong? Well, well, listen, okay, I held strong in the March of 2020 uh, crash. Let me tell you, um, we have never seen, uh, a, a, in my opinion, a more fearful time at any point in modern history, okay? Think about it from this context, right? In March of 2020, there was a belief that we were going to potentially have the global economy closed for years, that was the thought process. Like this was going to be a three-year thing and like hotels were going to have to be closed for three years and restaurants and all this stuff, okay? You want to talk about a fearful market? That blows the doors off of anything we're going through right now. There's Russia, Ukraine situation, inflation, the Fed. That's all like, that's all petty stuff compared to if you're talking about, because literally the thought process at that time, Bill Ackman went on CNBC, right? Talking about hotels were potentially going to zero and all this stuff, right? And that's a whole different situation. When you talk about closing down the global economy, right? The airlines all of a sudden couldn't fly. This was a situation where it was like un unemployment went to the highest level we ever pretty much seen, and it went there almost overnight. 
recession talk inflation talk fed talk oh my gosh like that's that's this is all like a joke this is all a joke compared to what we had to go through in this scenario this was one of those scenarios it was like is a dow going to five thousand is a dow going to three thousand is almost everything going to go out of business okay there was a whole different scenario and there was thoughts that you know we were going to have 20 percent plus there was people talking like we were going to have 20 percent plus unemployment for years to go in the future that was a sort of panic. We had a talk that, you know, there was going to be mass foreclosures, that like no one's going to be able to pay their bills anymore. You want to talk about the ultra, ultra uh, market that if you held through this, oh my gosh, everything in the future is just, uh, just child's play outside of maybe like a World War Three or something like that. Because that was a once in a hundred year pandemic where overnight all of a sudden it was like, oh yeah, we might close the global economy for years. Oh my gosh. Okay. So VIX went crazy. You might never see VIX that high again. You know, you, you just might never you, you, high high probability you never see it go that insane ever again. That was a that was a once in a like a hundred year event that came out of nowhere and it slapped the market and it it really shook things up in a major major way. Now, when you come off of a situation like that, you got to understand you're going to have big volatility for a couple of years after that. Essentially, we saw the same exact thing in 0809. 0809, VIX went crazy essentially, right? ultra volatility in, in the market. And the VIX stayed pretty darn high for the next couple of years after that. You look at 2010, 2011, 2012, the VIX was pretty high. Things started to calm down in 2013. And then from about 2013 through about 2020, you, you know, uh, January 2020, that was, the VIX was pretty chill. It had some time periods when it spiked up here and there. And there was, you know, fears about this and fears about that. But for the most part, the VIX was kind of kind of chill. But whenever you come off of a crazy volatile situation, you're gonna you're gonna have to understand you're gonna deal with a, a heavy VIX for quite a while, and that's exactly what we're kind of dealing with here. And right now, this is one of those scenarios where you know we're in this market that is uh, in an ultra kind of fear state, and so we have elevated VIX. And if you look at the, this curve of the VIX, there, you know, it's clear as day. You know, we have ultra volatility in this market, and you have to continue to expect that sort of volatility. Now, if you want to see something that is uh, mind-blowing, check out this next slide. This next slide shows us uh, futures. And futures, essentially, what I saw was, I, I watched futures, okay? Futures were down big. Then futures were up big. Then futures were down big again. What this shows me is the market has no flip and flapjacking clue where it wants to go. All the market's looking at right now is what is the narrative short term from kind of the media out there. And if everybody's talking about the Russia situation and all the embassy clothes, the market's going to tank on the back of that. It's literally like headline reading right now. And whatever the headlines are, that's the way the market wants to move. If we didn't have a headline around, you know, a super negative thing around Russia today, the market probably would have been up. But that's all that matters right now. Company earnings don't matter right now in this sort of market. Balance sheets don't matter. Income statements don't matter. Nothing matters in this sort of market but the headlines. The headlines are completely driving this market right now, and the market has no clue where it wants to go. All the market knows is it wants to move wherever the headlines move it right now. It's quite extraordinary, right? Now, this is pretty crazy. So I'm watching the, the Russell again here. I, I'm keeping track of this. I kept track of it last week. And what I'm finding is the Russell is pretty much consistently outperforming the other indexes. And here I'm, I'm looking at it again. It's doing a little better than the NASDAQ. It's doing better than the S&P. It's doing better than the Dow. You know, if this wasn't such a drama cycle we're in right now with, with everything that's going on, right? And I think the rush, the, the, the Russell would be basically in this situation where this thing could beast. I think it's a coiled spring that whenever there's, we have like max drama going on out there right now between all these different things all hitting us at once, right? Whenever this crap calms down, the Russell's ready to go on a run that I think is going to be pretty darn epic. Let's just put it that way. And the reason I have that type of conviction is not just because we're looking at, you know, small caps that are trading really, really cheap right now and a ton of them, right? The main reason is I'm watching the indexes in, in a normal market when the VIX is super high and the market's super fearful, you should expect the Russell to be selling off way heavier, way heavier than the other indexes. When the Russell's outperforming the other indexes in this sort of volatile market that's in a downtrend, there's something we, there's something a little fishy going on. And it just shows me that there's just it's just waiting to make a massive move. But we're not going to be able to make that massive move in the Russell or in the markets in general, but specifically with the Russell, until all this crap calms down. When, when you have 
When you have the Russia situation uh, all over the headlines, when you have inflation all over the headlines, when you have the Fed all over the, high, the, the headlines, when you have all that, right? Plus all the other stuff going on. When you have all that, how, how's the Russell going to make a positive move right now? It's just in this negativity cycle. I can't find, you know, like, like I said, I watched CNBC for like an hour or two, the past hour or two. I couldn't find, I was really interested. I'm like, let me see if I can find anything they talk about that's a positive. Nothing. I couldn't find one single thing that was like, the narrative was a positive in, in this situation. Every single thing came from a negative angle, a negative standpoint. That's it. And, and the Russia situation just kept getting talked about and all oh, this happened, this happened. And so it was interesting. I watched it for an hour or two and I'm like, you know, this is the biggest financial news network and it's just, that's where it is everywhere right now though. Everything is a, has a negative angle on it and a neg- negative spin. And when you're in that sort of market, it gets very, very tough to move the indexes up when just every single thing is just negative, negative, negative. But I can tell you when things flip, oh my gosh, like, you know, we're going to see some epic moves. That's all I'm going to say about that. We just need to get through this whole drama a cycle and whenever this thing's done whether it's in a few weeks or a few months or whenever it is uh the russell's ready to to take off like a like a beast okay crude oil wow you want to see something crazy crude oil is just uh, ripped the top off essentially okay crude, crude oil is just spiked i mean look at crude oil just a few months ago where it was in the 60s and now it's 95 by far and away the highest it's been at any point in the past year but not only that you want to see something even crazier okay Crude oil is by far and away the highest today that it's been in the past five years. The past five years, it's never traded even anywhere anywhere even close to this range. I mean, you look back at kind of 2018-ish time, we were around $75 oil, and here we are at 95. And there's no telling when this will stop. As long as this Russia situation continues and all this fear around Russia, right? If you didn't know, Russia's a huge player in the fossil fuel game. As long as this continues on, Oil's going to stay high, and oil's going to continue to beast in this scenario. Once the Russia stuff calms down, whether that's in the next four to seven weeks, which is likely, whenever that calms down, uh, oil will likely start, you know, uh, basically flatlining or even downtrending. But as long as this is going on, oh my gosh, you know, when you talk about one of the biggest players in fossil fuel game, and they're talking about all this instability in the markets and all these, you know, geopolitical tensions. Oh, you know, this is one of those situations that's perfect to make oil go up. And I'm sure Russia doesn't mind it in this situation, right? Even crazier than that, okay? Even much crazier than that. Oil is trading at the highest it has in eight years, in eight Flip and flap jack in years. Yes, oil is trading the highest since then, okay? Last time you saw oil higher than this, you have to go back to March of 2014. March of 2014, right? Now, the setup for oil is kind of beautiful uh, because you have all this Russia stuff going on. Then you have uh, the global economy truly really opening for real, for real over the next few months. Global travel opening back up in a major way. And as you usually go into the spring and summertime, that's usually a very, very good time for oil. And so the whole setup for oil is looking really, really good. And it almost makes a lot of folks tempted to play oil. Now, the one thing I'll say about it is when everything is lining up so perfect like that, you almost have to think there's, there's got to be a catch. There's, there's got to be a catch in this scenario, right? And um, it seems funky that everything is so perfectly lined up for oil right now. And I'm just like, where, where's the catch in this? There's got to be something, man. It's too perfect of a scenario for oil. There's got to be a catch somewhere. So, uh, But nonetheless, I mean, if you look at it logically and you put these points together, it's like, how does oil not keep going up for the next, you know, let's call it at least the next uh, three or four months, essentially, right? So as of right now, Oil's doing tremendous, and uh, yeah, so we'll see, but it, it could easily pass by, basically, you know, level, we could go back to maybe levels we haven't seen since 08, and by the way, that'll be another thing that freaks out the market, and you want to talk about more fears, it's like, oh, oil went, oil's at the high, imagine this headline on CNBC, crude oil, highest since 2008, oh, you know, get ready to scare everybody out of the market even more, right? Oh my gosh, oil is like most since 2008. We're, we're destined for a massive crash then, okay? Oh gosh, okay. There you got that going on. Now, this I pulled up from 2008 when, when oil was flying high, right? Quite interesting. You know, this person was saying, 
Royals going to 250. And uh, yeah, we're still waiting on 250. You know, maybe it comes someday. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, that was 2008. It's 2022. It's like 14 years later, and uh, we never even got close to 250 oil. Maybe it happens in the future, but you know, yeah, it's been it's been a little while on that one. I was out of Reuters there uh, covering that piece. No, you're gonna find some green out there in this market today. I, I see some green. There's a little green on the watch list. Oatly's green today. Tesla Maslow's holding strong here today. Amazon's actually up nice today. Well, nice on a bad day like today, right? Up 1.3%. Palantir is making an upward move. Palantir earnings are this week, by the way. A lot of people are going to be positioning for that one. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of put option activity and call option activity in Palantir, nonetheless. Square making about a 3% upward move here today. So, yeah, I mean, there's a little there's a little green out there today. It's not much, but, you know, a little bit. Gold. I want to talk about gold for a moment, okay? So, gold down today. First off, a lot of people think VIX goes high, markets go down, gold goes up. No, it doesn't actually work like that. In in a perfect scenario, or the way the gold bugs would like you to think, that would be the way it works. But that's actually not the way that, the way it works. But that's the way you would think it works, right? But it's not the way it works. Just factually, and when you pull up a charts and you start to look at this a little deeper, you're like, oh man, everything I've been fed to about gold is basically false, essentially. Okay, so look at this, right? When did gold make its? Gold was in the 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 dumpers for a while. Let's just call it that, okay? Gold really started spiking high when the Fed did their dang thing, okay? When the Fed pumped all that money out there, guess what? Gold made a big, huge upward move, essentially, okay? And so it wasn't that that fears went up. It was really just the fact that the, the money supply got increased massively, and the Fed opened up their printers, and a lot of people had a whole lot more money all of a sudden, right? And so it was like, if, if all of a sudden there's a ton more money to put places, well, guess what? It's going to prosper. The stock market's going to prosper in that scenario. Gold's going to prosper in that scenario. And real estate's going to prosper in that scenario. And also things like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies for the more folks that like take a little more risk, those are going to prosper. If you, ta- if you take away money, okay, if you take away money, and obviously that makes it hard for, you know, all assets to do well in that scenario, right? If, you know, imagine there's a scenario where not only is there not money pumped in the system, but you just took it out of the system. Well, everything goes down that scenario. So this whole gold situation in terms of the way some folks think about gold doesn't really work the way you think it really works, okay? And um, the fact is, you know, when the money was pumped, that's when gold did its best. And since then, it's had some trouble. And uh, gold had quite a bit of trouble for, for quite a while there, nonetheless, okay? And, uh, you know, think about when gold made its big move uh, from about 08 to, you know, 2012 or so. Well, guess what? When that move was happening, the Fed was also doing a little little business out there. So, you know, I think gold's so much more dependent upon the Fed than the gold bugs really want to admit. And um, I think if they really looked at this logically, they would realize, oh, man, the Fed actually controls gold. And, and I know people hate that. But, you know, facts are facts. Look at the data. Look at the charts. And you're going to you're going to have things kind of explained to you. OK, now look at the chef here today trading around break even revolves trading around break even Corsair is trading, you know, slightly down, but not down nearly as much as the market. When I look at stocks like this, these stocks are just kind of in this this standpoint. Like they don't really know what they want to do. Wins the same. I sort of circle wins wins the same scenario right now. Where folks are looking at some of these stocks, let's just say these four here, and they're not really sure what they want to do, but they really don't want to sell. Think about win, right? You could say you sell win, right? Uh, Macau's likely going to open up back in full over the next six months. Do you really want to sell win when uh, China's about to open back up in full over the, the next six months? Macau's likely going to open up full in the next six months. You really want to sell win right now? Even with all these fears and all this drama and the Russia, the Russia situation, the Fed. But do you really want to sell win right now? Mm, at 91? That's a tough sell. You know, TTCF. Hmm. Do you really want to sell TTCF? What? Because Russia might make a move in Ukraine? What? Because, uh, you know, uh, inflation's high? Because uh, the Fed might raise rates? Like, do you really want to sell TTCF in that situation? This is not even a stock that's very dependent upon the index is necessarily doing good. This is a stock that folks like myself that have a lot of money are, are holding, you know, seven figures worth of, of shares. And it doesn't matter to me. Like, I don't freaking, I don't freaking care what, what's going on out there. I'm not selling the stock. At the end of the day, they have massive expansion. They're going to be a revenue beast for the next 10 years. I don't care what happens in the short term, drama, bad, good, any of that. And obviously right now it's just fear. And this is the way a lot of people look. They're like, do I want to sell chef today? Of course not. Uh, Revolve, same exact situation. When you look at how well that management team's done over the last number of years growing that business, do you really want to sell Revolve? When you think about the, the global economy truly opening back up, which is really going to start to play out over the next few months, where 
where we've kind of been in this like fake open uh, situation, right? When, when, as this global economy really opens back up, a business like Revolve does really, really well. I'm hearing about it, okay? A lot of the big tech companies and a lot of the biggest companies in the world are, are getting ready to go back full to office over the next three months. I know several people that's, you know, all, pretty much, I know people at all the big tech companies that are the big tech companies, okay? Let's just call it that. And they all are saying that they're going back to the office, at least in some form or fashion, over the coming months outside of uh, Meta. Meta's the one that they're likely going to stay virtual, but that's because their whole metaverse thing and they want to try to stay virtual for the most part. Um, but pretty much all the other big techs I can find, they're all going to at least go back to the office part, part way. I think that's just a leading indicator that there's more of the go back to office uh, scenario going on. And guess what? Revolve thrives in that sort of environment. Corsair Gaming, you know, who wants to sell Corsair Gaming? What, because of the Russia situation? Because No, of course not, okay? If anything, Corsair is about to go from all these headwinds against it, you know, that have been against it for the past year, to all of a sudden a situation where they got massive tailwinds behind their, their company, and that's going to happen over the next several quarters. So it's like, do you really want to sell Corsair? And so that's why you're not seeing a lot of these stocks make big downward moves, because people are like, dude, I'm not freaking selling these stocks because of this crap, okay? And most of these folks aren't selling these stocks no matter what. But never mind, because of this stuff that's going on, give me a break. And that's just the way people look at it right now. And that's why it gets hard to, to send any of these stocks down. You look at the markets here today, it's a rough one out there, at least uh, you know as of recording this. But the, these stocks are, are, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these stocks end up finishing green for the day. You know, that's just kind of the market we're in right now, essentially, where, where people are like, I don't care, man. And that's exactly the way I am. Like, whatever. You know, they can, they can create the drama show, create the panic, do all they want to do. At the end of the day, I'm just going to buy more shares and hold the shares I do have. And, and that can be that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you're looking to get that deal before it ends, only a couple hours left on that. Funny Financial Fortress, my private stock group, all those sorts of things. That deal's about to end, so check out Pin Common if you want to access that before it ends. Much love as always, and have a great day.